Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna be talking about 10 mistakes you can make while planning your wedding that will totally bust your budget wide open. There are a lot of mistakes that you can make while planning your wedding that make you go over budget. Most couples do in fact. If you look at a lot of the statistics out there, uh, most couples spend more than they want to on their wedding and a lot of them much more than they want to. My name is Brittany from wayfaringweddings.com where I am currently planning my own wedding, writing about it, um, and also here on YouTube. So if you like this video, please like it and give me a subscribe and follow me along on this crazy journey. I'm trying to make my wedding as eco-friendly and budget-friendly as possible, so that's usually what I talk about here. Uh, so there are a lot of basic ways that you can spend too much on your wedding, and that's not what this list is. I'm gonna give you 10 things that maybe you didn't think about. Um, so watch till the end and then let me know if I missed anything what other of course I did There's so many things out there that can bust your budget So let me know what other mistakes that you've made or that you know of that your friends maybe have made in the comments below um, How can we avoid spending too much money on our weddings? How can we stay within our budgets? Wedding planning mistake number one is to have a long engagement and the theory behind this is that if you have more time to plan your wedding, you'll spend more money. It's kind of like when you're in a store, the store wants to like keep you in there as long as possible by playing nice music and making the atmosphere nice because the longer you're in there, the more likely you are to spend money. Um, so that's the idea here. If you have a shorter engagement, you just don't have the opportunity to spend that cash. So if you got a six month engagement or less, you're less likely to spend or to overspend on your wedding. Um, now some people will argue the opposite side of this that if you have more time to plan if you have a longer engagement then you also have more time to shop around to compare vendors um, to maybe get a vendor that was cheaper that you wanted um, because they're available um, so, I mean, it, it's really gonna depend from situation to situation, but in my anecdotal evidence, my anecdotal experience, I do see friends who have longer engagements getting kind of sucked into the wedding industry or whatever you wanna call it a little bit more um, and just feeling like they have, they have time and they're gonna overspend or they're gonna buy things that they don't need um, and end up not using in the end just because they had too much time. So have a shorter engagement if possible. Uh, wedding budget mistake number two is not going with minimalist decor and sort of getting sucked into this Pinterest monster world where the decor is so beautiful and intricate. It's actually really nice and cheap to go minimalist on your decor and guests don't really care about decor. I've talked about this in other videos or a small percentage of guests experiences are really affected by the decor of your wedding so it's in my opinion it's not a good place to spend your money um there are better more important more fun focused areas of your wedding that i think that you should invest in or that i guess i'm going to invest in in my wedding and i would highly suggest others do too but anyway, um, so minimalist decor is just like really um, like simple candles, maybe greenery without a whole lot of flowers. This is hard for me because I love colors. Like I love bright colors. I love um, like kind of really crazy designs. Um, so I am in influenced by this Pinterest monster. <laughs> I want like carpets everywhere and bright colors. Um, but that is expensive. That costs a lot more money than just simple, elegant, um, minimalist decor. So if, if you like that already, it looks nice and it's way cheaper. Wedding mistake number three is simply getting married during wedding season, which is any time from April to October. If you get married from April to October, at least in Canada or the US, it's gonna be way more expensive. Um, so if you don't care about having a colder wedding, a winter wedding, which can be beautiful, um, consider getting married from November to March, uh, excluding holidays like New Year's Eve and things like that. Uh, which are expensive usually, but uh, other than that, you can get seriously cheap deals um, in a lot of cities by getting married in this winter time frame. Number four is a weird one. This is not allowing yourself to dream at the beginning, not indulging your crazy wedding dreams at the very beginning when you start planning your wedding. So what I mean is, I, I think that it's a good idea to sit down with your partner when you first start planning your wedding and your budget and just to make a, a huge list of all like the dream things that you would love to have at your wedding 
if you were a bazillionaire. Um, and then by doing this, you can kind of like let yourself live those things because you've talked about them, you've gotten it out of your system, um, you've indulged all of these crazy, crazy dreams that you have and let them go and like you've accepted it, you've expressed that you wanted those and you let them go. Um, if you don't do this, you kind of just like push those dreams down <laughs> deep inside of you and never let them see the light of day. Uh, you can end up being kind of disappointed later on because you never dealt with any of those dreams or expectations that you had. I kind of talked about this in another video, um, what is a wedding worth it to you? which maybe I'll link up here. Um, so yeah, just like let yourself dream big at the beginning and then slash it viciously. <laughs> slash those things out um, that you don't really, really need. Um, but let them at least be a consideration at the beginning. Let yourself dream. A lot, Many people don't do this and then they find themselves overspending because those dreams you know, rear their heads at some point in the wedding planning and they never accepted and let, let them go. So um, they do end up paying for like some variation of those dreams that they wanted. This is all really rambly, I hope it makes sense. Basically indulge your dreams and then let them die. Budget mistake number five, I hope is becoming more and more obvious and that is using too much paper. Using um, paper for save the dates, invitations, RSVP cards, uh, individual menus at the actual reception, um, individual programs at the ceremony, all of these little paper things. Um, and I'll throw favors in there too, favors as well. All of these little things that you buy cost so much money. Probably all those things I just said can easily add up to like $1,500, $2,000 for all these little paper things that you really don't need. There's way better ways of doing all these things. You can do electronics, save the dates and invitations. You can, uh, and which is also more eco-friendly, by the way. <laughs> um, you can do um, just sign, do a sign for your menu and reception. Um, reception, your menu and uh, program. <laughs> um, so it's just really unnecessary to have all these little paper things and spend money on that. Just cut that out of your budget and put all that money into something that's more fun and um, more impactful and more memorable such as maybe for some of you it's going to be photography, for some people food, for some people music, um, things that really contribute to making memories of the event and making sure that your guests and you have fun. Number six is going to make some people uncomfortable. I don't really, I mean, I don't love this idea. It's okay. So this mistake is getting married on a weekend. Um, everybody gets, many people get married on a weekend, which can be a, a mistake if you consider what it costs to get married on a weekday, which is like a third of the price at many venues. Um, the problem with this, of course, is that your guests have work. <laughs> so like getting your guests to your event can be a problem. Um, and getting, or at least getting them to stay late if they're local can be a problem if you get married on a weekday. However, there are Friday weddings that cost a lot less at many venues. Um, and if you aren't, if you aren't like a big partier or you're just having a lot of local guests and you can swing a, um, local weekday wedding, uh, why not? So why not save thousands of dollars on a venue by getting married on a weekday. Number seven, mistake number seven is hiring vendors for too long. So what I mean here is that if you have a, a, a photographer, for example, or a videographer, instead of hiring them for like six hours or eight hours to capture every single little moment of the night, why not just have them around for an hour or two and um, get like a few photos, really professional, beautiful photos, maybe of the ceremony and a little bit of the cocktail hour or reception or whatever, like whatever part is most important to you. And then that's it, right? It'll be so much cheaper to get smaller packages like this. Or some people hire their DJs for their ceremony and their reception, which is wonderful because then your DJ can kind of curate the music at your ceremony, but it's so much more expensive. So um, you can avoid this by just hiring certain vendors for just smaller packages. It's, it's like a myth. It's a lot of social pressure, I mean, to 
have vendors for every single moment of the night or a photographer, I'm thinking photography and videography a lot here, to have them for every single moment of the night. Um, personally, I just don't think that's worth it or necessary, very controversial, I know. Um, but you can save a lot of money in your budget by just le lowering by, I can't speak, by <laughs> making their packages shorter. Mistake number eight is not getting the cost of things up front and in writing. So this is like true of weddings and in life. Uh, if you're promised something uh, uh, verbally, it doesn't always mean that it's a real binding promise, unfortunately. Um, and especially in wedding world where expectations are so high for some of these vendors and they just don't wanna give you a price, they won't give you a solid price until you meet with them in person and it can just be kind of an awkward situation and it's just like hard to know how much things cost <laughs> in wedding world. Um, so, but really like being assertive, kind and respectful, but assertive about what your budget is, what you feel comfortable spending, um, just like insisting on a price and telling people what your expectations are and then insisting on a price. I think that's fair. Um, and getting that in writing as soon as possible. And, and of course, reading reading your contracts before signing anything. Um, and then these days, I would also say making sure that uh, you read the emergency clauses. <laughs> um, make sure you're covered for any kind of emergency situations that might emerge. Wedding planning mistake number nine is probably also controversial and that is buying diamonds, especially mined diamonds. <laughs> So diamonds that have been mined from the earth are much more expensive than lab-grown diamonds. They are both diamonds, they're both exactly the same chemically and physically, um, but diamonds that have been mined from the earth cost a lot more money. Uh, so there are other options such as lab-grown diamonds um, and things like moissanite, which is not a diamond, but is diamond-like and much cheaper. Um, and then like a million other gemstones and kinds of rings that you can buy that aren't diamonds, that aren't as expensive. Um, I'm not anti-diamond, but I don't think that anyone should be breaking the bank to buy a diamond. Uh, it's just crazy to me. Whew, I have a feeling that this is not going to be very popular. <laughs> I have been told many times before that my wedding opinions are not popular. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> and mistake number 10 is having a wedding party or bridal party, or having a wedding party or bridal party and just um, buying them a whole bunch of stuff. <laughs> so what I mean by this is you can have a wedding party, a bridal party, and have it fit into a nice um, low budget if you don't do all that extra stuff like a proposal bo proposal boxes for each one of your bridesmaids, which people do and they cost a lot of money, um, or like um, giving them gifts or um, all of these kind of things that have become normal these days, but were not normal in the past. It's just like, you know, people have decided that we have to spend money on these things and it's really, I mean, if you want to, great. But if you have a small budget, you shouldn't feel pressured to do these things. Um, and you shouldn't feel bad if you can't do them or you just don't wanna do them or you just wanna spend your money on other things that aren't proposal boxes. Um, so yeah, this is one budget mistake, I'll call it a mistake, um, is just to have a wedding party or to have a big wedding party or to spend way too much on your wedding party. Just like be realistic from the beginning about what you want and what you can afford in terms of a wedding party. And some other final tips to save money on your wedding are things like don't do a champagne toast that will cost extra money, um, don't have a fancy lounge area that you're not gonna use for very much of the day, reuse your ceremony decor for your reception, reuse your bouquets for centerpieces, go secondhand and thrifted items as much as you can. It doesn't have to be like a crazy, difficult, insane DIY project to do this. You can have like really simple, beautiful decor that is thrifted or that's DIY, simple DIY, DIY, not really complicated DIY that's gonna cost you a lot of money and time. Um, so yeah, those are some of my budget tips. I hope that they help you. Please like this video and subscribe to my channel. Thanks everybody.